Go live. Ah! This is really exciting. Um, hi. Welcome to my kitchen on um, this beautiful, actually funny morning uh, here in the Coxwolds. We're in just outside of Sirencester. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful blue skies. So, um, we're going to have a little quick take here, um, making crunchy rocky road, and um, it's really, really quick, and using a lot of things that you've probably already got in the cupboard and the fridge, and um, a really good one at the moment to make with the little people when um, they're at home from schooling. I spoke to my sister-in-law and my nephews have both been in the kitchen baking and doing all sorts of bits and pieces so um, I thought I'd do a really easy recipe this morning for my first kitchen live so um, uh, you can bake along if you've got the ingredients or um, watch this back. I will be posting the full recipe and pictures and the video will be replayed um, later on the Facebook page and on the blog so there's plenty for you to see but um, Let's get started. If you are there, drop me a line in the comments. I can see everything um, and let me know where you're from. And um, yeah, let's get going. So Rocky Road or fridge cake or some people call it Tiffin is absolutely no bake. It is full of um, all sorts of goodies. And yesterday we got our um, food shopping delivery. Yay! <laughs> Finally, so I've decided with uh, things that I've got on there, we, we're going to give it a go. And one of my favourites was on offer was crunchy. Uh, so we're going to be making these and a few other little bits and pieces that I found in the cupboard. Um, so first off, we're going to get our saucepan. I don't have a microwave, so I'm melting my butter and my cold syrup over there, over there, on the hop. Um, and first up, you're going to need uh, 125 grams of butter. Um, this has been um, out this morning, so it's nice and soft. Um, but if you've got it from the fridge, you might want to cube it. It will be a little bit easier for it to melt. And then we've also got 25 grams, uh, sorry, 125 grams of golden syrup. Or if you're get golden syrup, things like light corn syrup if you're in the state. It's really gloopy and sugary. So just oh, get that in there. And we're just going to put this on a gentle heat to melt through the butter and golden syrup. Uh, so it all gets together. We don't want to put it on too high because we'll burn both of them. And with the golden syrup with all the sugar, it's not good, it's just gonna taste nasty, smell horrible. So, pop that in there and pop this on the hob. So, it's low hob, um, or you can do it in 30 second blasts in the microwave. I've um, blown up three microwaves since we've been in this house, so I'm not allowed to have one. <laughs> um, That's a low heat. I'm going to keep an eye on it because um, obviously I don't want to um, still, uh, I don't want to burn it. Um, so we're just going to keep going. Uh, somebody just asked if the couch is still available. I have no couch for sale. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, right. Whilst that's melting, and then what we'll do is we'll add. Um, our chocolate into it and the heat of the butter and the golden syrup will melt the chocolate um, really. um you can if you want give this a little bit of a hand in the microwave again 30 second blasts um and it'll it'll help get it on its way i've got a mixture in here of dark and milk chocolate um some people prefer to all milk uh, or milk or all dark i like to have a bit of a mix of both and i've got 200 grams of each and I just cracked it before, chopped it all up, broke it into pieces 
ready to go. So let's talk about what we're going to put in our rocky road. And obviously, we've got the crunches. Um, I like to add mini marshmallows. Uh, these are pink and white ones. Um, I normally put about 100 grams in, but there's only 50 left in the bag. <laughs> Um, I because I made um the party ring blondies, which are coming this week. I'm just editing the video, and the party ring blondies have got the marshmallows in, and I thought I'd got more than I had. But I've got 50 grams, but that's quite a lot, so I'm just going to pop this all into a big mixing bowl here. So that's that one. We're then going to add some glacier cherries. Uh, it's a preference, really. You don't have to. Typically, it's lush and terries and digestive biscuits. Um, I quite like them. It's a little bit of a fruitiness. These are whole, so I'm just going to quickly chop them up here. Just check that butter. melting gently in there. I need one of those spoon rests. <laughs> By the time we've chopped these, this is back. So I'm just going to quickly, roughly chop the cherries and mind your fingers. If you're doing this with little ones, they can do it with a pair of childproof kitchen scissors. Or the little child knives, if you've seen those, that are um, they look like a proper knife, but they're they're blunted. They they're great um, to help kids learn a few knife skills as well. Um, I think you can get them on places like Amazon and Legland if you're in the UK. That's if you can get anything at the moment. So I've just chopped those a little bit roughly. They're not perfect. They don't need to be and pop those in there. What I did find lurking in the back of the cupboard, and I have a baking cupboard, it's all full of random bits and pieces, are these. These are honeycomb pieces. I think I got these in Aldi um, when I was sort of going down the baking aisle. One second, let me check this. Okay, let's just come back to this so we can get the top. So this is melted. Um, it's not cooked. I could hear it just starting to bubble, so that's an ideal time for me. Just stare it through. It smells really sweet. So with the chocolate, I'm just going to pop that in here to melt. We'll see how that gets on. We might just need to pop it back on the heat really gently um, to help the chocolate, but we don't want that chocolate to split or seize. But actually, it's it's melting really quickly, so that's really good. And that's on a hot stand. So back to the honeycomb pieces. Yeah, I picked these up in Aldi, and you can get them in other sorts of supermarkets as well. They're just like the little honeycomb bits inside the crunchy, and I thought actually. So short life on them left, I'm going to pop these in. So I'm going to pop about half a bag of those in. This is 100 grams, so we're saying about 50 grams of those. If I can open them. <laughs> well done, Louise. The one thing you haven't done. So I'm going to go half a bag of the honeycomb pieces into our brown, um, rocky road mixture. There you go. That actually put quite a lot in there. So that's just going to help with the uh, crunchy texture. Key thing, I haven't opened these yet. <laughs> these are the digestives. I've been hiding in the cupboard away so I don't eat them for the last couple of days. I'm ready for this. But um, you can use Mobitis, you can use uh, Own Brown, you can use different cookies or biscuits if you want to. There's a uh, Maltese Rocky Road over on the blog that uses chocolate chip cookies. Oreos are really good as well. Shortbread, shortcake, all sorts. 
And for this recipe, we're going to need half of this. This is a 400 gram pack, so about 200 grams. I'm just going to reuse the bowl that I had the chocolate in because we're going to break these up into smaller pieces. This is the one thing I thought I should prep, but you know, we didn't. Uh, this is the bit where I always have a bit <laughs> a bit for the rocky road. So we've got about just about half a pack in here. Um, let's just stir uh, this. This okay, so this is melting through really quite nicely, so we won't need to heat that, but let's just keep stirring it. It smells really, really chocolatey, really, really sugary. So our digestive biscuits, just with your fingers or your hands, just break them up into chunks. We don't want to break them up to crush them like we do with a cheesecake base because we want to have some of those pieces through there. So sort of pieces like this, just break through. It's going to give you that really nice crunchy sort of biscuity that chocolatey gooeyness as well. So once we've got all of those, we're just going to add it to our mixture already. I'm just going to quickly my hands. Check I turned the stove off. Yes. Give this a quick stir through. This is all nice and silky with the butter and the chocolate and the golden syrup. Stir it through. And then, last but not least, our crunches. So because I've got the honeycomb pieces, these ones that I got in here, I'm only going to chop up two crunches to go in the mix. I'm then going to keep one on top, pop that up and put it on top, and then I'm going to keep one for myself. Um, that is my treat. Um, so with our crunches, you can pop these in the fridge the night before. Um, sometimes it makes it easier to uh, break them up if you quite like even pieces. I'm just going to go, like we did with the cherries, just chop it into chunks. So gently with your knife. Into sort of little cute pieces. Some like this, the smaller ones, this one. And the last one, when I can get it out, <laughs> I swear these have got smaller. Crunchies have definitely got smaller. Like everything else, these were a lot bigger. <laughs> a lot younger. So we're just gonna roughly chop that through as well. Maybe some bigger bits. We've got those honeycomb pieces in there as well, so make sure not to take your fingers off. Just pop that down there. So we've got our big bowl full of everything and our final kit of crunch pieces, so all of that goes in there. So here we've got the uh, the honeycomb pieces, the marshmallows, the cherries, the biscuits, and now the crunches. So give it a good mix through. You can break some of those biscuits up a bit more if you want to. See, it's so simple, and this is a great thing of doing this for kids. Even if you're doing the chopping of the crunches, they can break the the biscuits up by their hands and do the mixing together. Um, and eat half of it as they go along, or as I go along, which is usually the case. So 
Our mixture and our chocolate mixture is nice and ready to go. The last thing I want to do before I put the two together is just find the thin. Now I was going to use a brownie uh, tray, but when I looked at it, it was quite um, uh, not very high. Never word I mean. So I've decided to put it into a painting. This is a square eight inch. Um, I'm looking for to get a nice depth. The brownie tin was too low, so it would have been quite um, thin. And with all the filling in, you're not going to get everything in that one bite. So I've gone for an eight inch tin. And I've got two pieces of baking paper that I've um, cut before. And I'm just going to lie those in. So lie, so lie one one way. Ooh. And line, let's just go here. You don't have the right vision for this, the other way. And one will hold the other one in, but it will also allow us to um, get this out quite easily. This is a loose leaf, uh, loose leaf, a loose base tin, so I'll just be able to pop it through. So we've got our tin all lined. Let's come back to my mixture and so with this, just pour it over the top, nice, and chocolate, oh it smells so good, this is not doing my lockdown diet any good, I will be doing plenty of Zumba this week with fabulous Maya, to burn any of this off, but it's the weekend, so it's treat day. I'm going to pop that in the sink. So we've got a chocolate in our mix. Just mix it all the way through. Give a good coating. It, you'd be surprised actually when you see all the chocolate in the thing. You think, how is that all going to coat? And it all sticks together. But it does really easily. And it just is the most amazing thing. I absolutely love this. It's my biggest downfall. In the fridge, and it's nice and cool. So you see, it doesn't really take much at all. We've got that all nicely coated and ready to go into our tin. And she says, left handed person here. Just in it goes. Definitely needed this bigger tin than the brownie tin. So I'm just going to put that all down. Oops. A little bit on the work surface there. <laughs> I'm actually really looking forward to this later. It smells so good. Uh, we did the garden yesterday, so we've got garden is all nice and tight for sitting in. Cup of tea and some rocky road. Just get rid of those bits. And with the spoon I used earlier for the golden syrup, I'm just gonna move that down into the corners because it's unlike a cake, this isn't gonna move around the batter mix is quite I have to do it for it. So get it all into the corners. Push it down. You be quite firm with it. It's not. You're not going to do anything back to when it all is pushed in and all nice together. It's even better. So nearly there. We've got our rocky road all in there. The last thing I want to do is just quickly get rid of the chocolate. And then we're going to come back with our last crunchy. We're going to crunch one of these up so we can sprinkle it all over the top. Um, I did, you can get like, um, 
crunchy spread, a bit like the Biscoff and the Maltese spread, but unfortunately none of it came and come on our delivery yesterday. And I'm having a delivery, I'm asthmatic, so um, I'm well and truly holding down and staying in out of the way of things. Um, I think, but we have been able to get some really fab veg boxes and things from local growers and just using the supermarkets for those things that we can't get from our from our locals. That flour has been on a short demand and I managed to get some last week from our farm shop who has a little left. These crunches are a little bit smaller than the pieces that are in the cider. They're a little bit finer, and that's just so we can put that straight over the top. So I'm just going to sprinkle all over. It's been lovely for everybody joining. If you have joined, it'd be lovely to know where you've joined me from. <laughs> and there's just some crumbs there. The best bit. So, I'm just going to, lastly, just with the spoon again, just quickly pack some of those in so they get a bit of a purchase. That's our crunchy rocky road. It's ready to go into the fridge. Now um, probably covered in chocolate. So that's going to stay in the fridge for about two hours minimum. Um, you want it to really set because if you try and cut it it will just fall apart. So two hours minimum. If you can leave it overnight um, even better, um, and, and it's it's easier to cut than if you just want to cut it up into chunks and pieces. I keep mine in the fridge once I finish with it, because especially with it being warmer at the moment and it gets a bit melty and then it gets messy and you end up with chocolatey hands. <laughs> um, it's it's a really simple, easy. I won't say bake, but non bake <laughs> uh, that you can do on lockdown with the kids if they are. I'm looking for things to do. There's a couple of other bits and pieces as well that we can do next week. I'm thinking of doing maybe the really simple oatmeal cookies that everybody seems to quite like. I've had a few people I know on the Facebook page saying that they've made them and they're really good fun and they're really easy to make. And also we'll be doing some cupcake decorating as well, provided I've still got some flour and I can get hold of some icing sugar. Um, but Thank you very much for joining me. I will be posting proper pictures and the full recipe over on the page ASAP. The video will be available to replay. You want um, that? Oh, we blipped in and out then. But until that is set in the fridge, um, thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed my first kitchen live. And hopefully see you again soon. Have a lovely Sunday. It's really sunny wherever you are in the world. Stay safe and stay home. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. -bye.